The Metropolitan Planning Council, along with 35th Ward Alderman Ray Cologne, invited neighbors to a series of planning meetings at Hairpin Arts Center on Tuesdays in September. The goal of the meetings is to gauge community support and gather community input for a variety of possible developments on city-owned land outside the CTA Blue Line Station. But, you know, this is, this is an exciting and different kind of meeting because usually when it comes to having zoning changes, um, developers are coming to us, asking us to alter um, the law and change things so that they can build something that they want. Um, no one's coming to us right now. This is an opportunity for us to kind of design and pass off an idea to someone else and say, this is what we want to see happen um, in our community. Marissa Novara of the Metropolitan Planning Council said that while they're not endorsing any specific development, the MPC does have a general preference for transit-oriented development. Metropolitan Planning Council is an independent facilitator of the process. So by independent, we are independently funded uh, to do this work. We've not been paid by the alderman nor by anyone who um, is involved in some way in, in future development here. So we are independent, but we do have a point of view, and I just want to be clear in stating our point of view, as I've um, already talked about is certainly that transit is an incredibly important and strategic asset around which to build and that when we have an opportunity to do so we should really do so as thoughtfully as possible. So what that actually looks like in Logan Square is not for us to say, that's for all of you to say, but that is certainly um, the, the passion that we bring to this conversation. Toward the end of the evening, attendees participated in keypad polling with results showing in real time on the screen. Some attendees responded manually in writing, and their votes changed the final percentages, but only slightly. Some of the questions showed which neighbors were in attendance. It was apparent that the room was overwhelmingly white. That's not great. I think, uh, I think we all know that Logan Square is a pretty diverse community, so I can speak for NBC staff and tell you that we are going to do our best over the next week to make the next meeting more diverse because only 12% of people in this room identify as Latino or Hispanic but a majority of people who live in this neighborhood community area identifies as Latino or Hispanic. So, we're going to do our part. If you guys can help us. Also underrepresented at the meeting were renters and seniors, with only 6% of attendees aged 65 or older. If you live in Logan Square, do you rent or own? A, rent. B, own. C, you don't live in Logan Square. Five more seconds. Okay, so it looks like 39% of people rent, and 46% of people own, and 50% of people don't. So that representation is a little skewed towards ownership compared to the neighborhood in general. This neighborhood has a higher percentage of people who are renters, so we'll try to reach out over the next week and get more renters to even out the, the representation of this week. Other key findings of the polling included whether or not to build on the plaza outside the Blue Line Station at Kedzie in Milwaukee, with about half supporting development at that location. So, this is a pretty interesting result. Looks like 49%, or almost half, support building something on the station plaza. 13% don't care, and 37% do not think we should build on the station plaza. Okay, so that's a good result. And keep this in mind when we have a conversation next week about whether and how a development could occur. And feel free to comment with whatever opinion you have, that'd be great. All right, so now this question is also about the station plaza, and it's asking, if there were development, okay, so we're assuming at this point that there were development, there was, was going to be development, what type of development would it be? Now, if you don't support development at all, that's fine. We just want to get a sense of the overall community's vision for if you had to have development, what would it be? Okay, so the answer is 29% community space, 28% recreation park space, 22% housing, and 18% retail or food options. So uh, only 2% want to see office space. So it doesn't sound like there's much excitement about new office space. About 87% of attendees supported some type of development at the Emmett Street parking lot. The most popular option for development of this site was housing, with a variety of support among different options for how much parking should be kept or added. All right, so the plurality of people in the room, over a third of people support the idea of a development on the site with no parking at all. That's one option. 
11% of the people in the room don't want any development. So it sounds like actually, if you think about that, 13% of people don't care or don't want parking, or don't want a development, which means that 87% uh, of people in the room actually want some development on that parking lot. Okay, so that's interesting. 18% um, of people think that there should be development as long as the public parking is preserved. 15% of people think there should be development as long as there's parking for the development. And 17% of people think uh, that there should be development as long as there's parking for the development and the public parking is preserved. So an interesting mix of answers on this question. During the second meeting this Tuesday, the 16th, attendees will work in groups to plot out some of their ideas for development with professional planners and architects to fine tune the proposals to make them more feasible. The actual voting that we do around projects is in the third meeting. And, um, and to be clear, it's not really about saying, um, I like this project more than that one. It's more about saying, well, given the options to make this project, this vision viable, would we be willing to make this change or that change? So for instance, in Uptown, we made some adjustments to say, well, you know, you had laid out 120 spaces for parking, but under the TOD ordinance, you actually could have as few as 30, and that would close your financing gap significantly. Do you feel like that's an acceptable trade-off? And people voted as to whether they felt like that worked for them in that space. So we, we went through a series of changes like that that people voted on, yes or no. And then at the end, as you can see in the Uptown Report, we had several different scenarios that, um, that came out of the process. For Logan Square TV, this is Dan O'Donnell.